Hey everybody, Pastor Rob here. So glad that you're joining us for the Bridge Services Online once again this week. Man, this has been a crazy time for all of us, but man, I'm so glad that every one of you are making this a priority to worship God, even digitally, each week together. Uh, uh, if you're new with us, man, we're even more ecstatic that you're with us, and we would love to connect with you. If you haven't had a chance yet, make sure to uh, click in the chat box right now. There's a link there for you to fill out an online connect card. Here at the Bridge, we believe it's our job to do everything we can to uh, uh, connect with you as we try to get you connected to God. So please do take some time and fill out that connect card real quick and we'll do our best to, to, to be able to serve you in that. Uh, I've got a few announcements for you guys today. The biggest one and the most important one is that Mother's Day is coming up and we've got so many mothers that aren't going to be able to spend Mother's Day with their kids like they normally are because of the situation that we're going through right now. But we want to do everything we can to honor them. So something we would love for you to do for us is uh, go ahead and grab out your smartphone, your tablet or whatever, and record a 15 second selfie clip, a video of why you are thankful for uh, your mother, okay? Just one or two things that, that say, you know what, I'm thankful for my mom because of this or because of this. Make it about 15 to 20 seconds long and then upload it to the link in the chat box or we'll also include a link in our Facebook page throughout this week for you to do that. And what we wanna do is we wanna take all those videos and we wanna compile them together and, and do this awesome tribute to all of our mothers in service on Mother's Day. So uh, please, please, please make sure you take some time to do that. It shouldn't take long at all, and we would really, really love it if you could just upload it to that link, and we'll compile those and come up with something awesome. Uh, got a couple more things for you guys. Like every week, we want to encourage you to please do everything you can to sign up for online giving or at least give through snail mail. Uh, here at The Bridge, we just had a big board meeting where we talked about budget and the future and where God's taking us, and we think that God's got an amazing plan for our church moving forward, even despite this coronavirus situation. And I want to see our church explode out of this thing for so many great reasons. And so let's do everything we can to make sure we sign up for online giving. You can do that at www.thebridgechurchcc.com slash give, or you can give through snail mail at 913 South Main Street, Charles City, Iowa, 50616. And then lastly, guys, before the message comes up, make sure you grab a Bible, a notebook, and a pen. Let's do everything we can to engage with the message this week. We're going to be in Habakkuk chapter 3, and we're going to learn about what it means to praise God in the midst of the storm. I'm so, so glad that you made it to service this this week. One last thing for you is let's do what we can to invite other people to these services as well. The last thing I want to encourage you to do is share this video right now. Invite your friends and family to the service. Get them to come to church just by clicking on a button, and they don't even got to get off their couch. Once again, I'm so glad you're with us. I'm excited about what's ahead, and I hope you are as well. Thank you for joining us today. These are some strange times we're living in. Bridge Church family. Uh, this is Pastor Joe. Uh, I'm excited to get to worship with you. Welcome to our online service. Let's sing together this morning.
of Romans. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, I won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow very much that you sent your own son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins, for my sins. And it's because of his death that we have freedom, that we have victory, that we have life everlasting, that we get to experience a relationship with you. And so God, we just cry out to you this morning. We worship you this morning. We love you so much. Thank you for the love that you have shown us. Lord, speak to us as we open your word. Speak to our hearts, not in a way that just grows our brains, but in a way that transforms our very being. Because your words are life. And so we ask that you would speak this morning. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, pain is a lonesome place. I don't have to tell you, do I? It'll drop a rock in your stomach, right through your pounding heart. And when your knees are so weak, you hit the ground and you finally realize you don't got this. Well, now you might just make it. You see, the tallest tree may not weather the storm, but its roots do. So dig in, stand up and let the wind blow. Because there's hope.
Hey everyone, Pastor Rob here. Thank you so much for joining us online this week. I'm so glad you made it and that so many of you are making it uh, service a priority each week. It's been awesome having you engage online, whether that be on Sunday morning or through our prayer services or life groups or whatever it may be. Um, I hope you're all doing well. And most of all, I hope that you are being encouraged by these services and the efforts we're making to stay connected with all of you. As always, we're going to start service with a question this morning. Uh, we don't just want you flipping these services onto your TV or tablet or computer or smartphone each week. We want you actually engaging with the services each week. So in the chat box right now, I want, to, I want you to just answer this one question with just one sentence, okay? I want you to answer this one question with just one sentence. What is the biggest blessing you've experienced during this time of isolation and quarantine? I know that seems kind of weird because many of us hate this whole quarantine thing, but, but let's just celebrate together. What is one awesome blessing that you've experienced during this time? I think one of the biggest blessings I've experienced was when many of you drove by and dropped off gifts for my daughter on her birthday. Our littlest girl, Penelope, had a birthday on April 15th and so many people drove by and honked and dropped off presents on our doorstep. It was an awesome blessing and such an awesome encouragement from so many of you. So thank you to all of you that were able to do that and for the, whoever it was that organized that for her. Well, believe it or not, today we're wrapping up our series called Hope in the Dark. I know for many of you, this has been a perfect series for a time like this, and I cannot tell you how happy I am to see your responses each week. I'll be honest with you. I was really struggling and praying and seeking God on where to go uh, once the whole coronavirus situation took over, and I'm so glad to see him working in all of you and through all of you throughout this time. We've learned that a lot of people are hurting in this time. We know that a lot of people are struggling. We know that a lot of people are in the valley right now. And what's been amazing is that so many of you have been encouraged to not only wrestle and embrace your Heavenly Father in the valley, you've been working to help others do the same. That's what this whole series is all about. It, we began by asking the question, how do you believe in a God that is good when life is not? This question comes from what we see in the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a different kind of prophet. Most prophets spoke to people on behalf of God, but Habakkuk spoke to God on behalf of the people. And he spoke to God on behalf of the people because he was upset. You see, Israel had gone through the more than 40 kings and Habakkuk had had enough of them all. Israel was corrupt and unjust and falling away from God. And much of this was due to the poor leadership of those kings. So Habakkuk laments to God about how terrible things are, and, and God answers him. But his answer isn't what you might expect. Instead of, instead of telling Habakkuk that things are going to get better, God only says they're going to get worse. How do you believe in a God that is good when life isn't? I think the answer to that question begins with our idea of who God is. Do we believe that the God of the Bible is like a genie in a bottle that gives us whatever we want? Or do we believe that he is our heavenly father and gives us exactly what we need, exactly when we need it? If you're a parent, you probably understand this more than anyone. There are plenty of things that our children uh, want and repeatedly ask for. Like right now, my kids are constantly asking for snacks. Dad, can we have a snack? When, when do we get a snack? I just want a snack. But the fact of the matter is they don't need them. And sometimes even we let our children experience things alone so that they can grow in maturity and strength as an individual. A great example of this came just a couple weeks ago when my kids were riding their bikes outside. Going back to my littlest daughter, Penelope, um, she's still learning what it's like to ride her bike and understand balance. Even though she's on training wheels, her bike can still topple over if she's not careful. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened a couple weeks ago as we watched her slowly topple onto the pavement. It wasn't a hard fall. It was a slow and a, a little controlled even, but it was shocking and unexpected. And I'm sure it made her heart skip a beat. You know what I'm saying? So she did the same thing that every little girl does when she's scared. She began to bawl and cry out for mommy. Now my wife and I have uh, different tendencies and both tendencies are very important in situations like this. When my kids get hurt, my tendency is to hold back and see if they can tough it out, right? Dad's got to make them tough, right? Stephanie's tendency, however, is different. 
She loves to rush to their aid and kiss the boo-boos and snuggle them to her heart's content. My tendencies can eventually produce independence and calm in our child and, and, and in the midst of calamity, they're able to handle things a little bit better on their own, while Stephanie's tendencies can produce a sense of love and security in our child. Both of those things are very important. Much of the time we follow Stephanie's tendencies, especially as our children are still pretty young. But the older they get, the more we will let them experience difficult things as we sit back and watch and wait. I think God does the same for us in this life. He's still present. He's still there for us. But at times he holds back. He wants to show, he wants to see how we might handle a situation. He watches to see how strong our faith is, despite the fact that we may not be rushing, he may not be rushing to our aid. He tests us and wrestles with us. And, and, when, and when we respond correctly, it only deepens our faith and our relationship with him. I love what Mark Driscoll said when he talked about this. He said, God doesn't want to give you what you want. He's not a genie in a bottle. He wants to make you more like his son. We'll talk more about that later. Well, like I said, this series is based on the book of Habakkuk. And today we're going to be in the last chapter of that prophetic book. In week one, we were in chapter one where we see Habakkuk wondering what God is doing or, or, or even where God is in the midst of the fall of Israel. Here we learn that we don't have to walk away from God in the midst of our trials, but we can wrestle and embrace him during this time. Then last week, we were in chapter two where we see Habakkuk waiting to hear from God as he cries out. Here we learn that when we are put in a time of waiting, we don't have to quit on God. As a matter of fact, we should never quit on God. But rather, we need to lean in to listen. We need to write some things down and reflect. And, and we need to hold fast to him that we might draw closer. And this week, we're going to be wrapping things up by going into chapter three where we see Habakkuk do something powerful despite the circumstances. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd encourage you to go ahead and turn to Habakkuk chapter 3. If you don't have your Bible with you already, uh, I want to or you don't have an app for that, I'd encourage you to go ahead and download an awesome app called the YouVersion app on your tablet or your smartphone. It's an awesome social media Bible app that I'd highly recommend for interacting with Scripture, not just on your own, but with friends and family as well. Before we read it, though, I want to just pick apart one word uh, at the very beginning of the chapter um, because it sets the tone for the rest of Habakkuk's writings here. This is what it says right in verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shijanoth. Okay, some of you might be wondering, did Pastor Rob just swear at me? No, I said Shijanoth, okay? Just go ahead and try to spell that word in the chat box below. And, and no Googling either, you bunch of cheaters, all right? Just try and type out the word Shijanoth. Try to spell that out. It's kind of a strange word in the text. Probably one of the strangest words in the Bible because this is the only time it's used throughout Scripture and most scholars are just perplexed by it. However, it's theorized that the word Shijanoth is a musical term of some kind. For those of you that know music, it's kind of like the Italian words used to describe how to play a piece of music, like on Dante or Staccato. It instructs someone how to play or sing a piece with a certain demeanor or emotion behind it. And this musical term, Shijanoth, is the plural of the root word Shijin, which is also only used once in Scripture. It can be found in Psalm 7. And check this out. This is what one commentary writes about this word. It seems to be related to a verb meaning to reel to and fro. To some, uh, thus, some see this as an erratic display of enthusiastic irregularity or, or used in a song of triumph or victory. Or another definition I found said this. It said, musical direction for a congregation to sing a song with wild, passionate singing and rapid changes of rhythm and high-spirited praise and vigorous enthusiasm. So if you haven't picked up on what Habakkuk's throwing down here yet, Allow me to just paint this picture for you a little bit more plainly. Habakkuk went from wondering in chapter two, chapter one to waiting in chapter two to worship in chapter three. This is what it says starting in verse two. Lord, I've heard of your fame. 
I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in your day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his footsteps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and he made the nations tremble. Wait a minute. There hasn't been any resolution yet. God didn't do what Habakkuk asked. We're still in the midst of unanswered prayers. We're still in the midst of pain and turmoil. Habakkuk is still waiting on massive destruction to come about now that that God has revealed it to him. And and who knows if, if Habakkuk himself is going to be a victim of that destruction. And yet, he, he worships? A, a couple of things that I find unique about Habakkuk's worship here. Going back to that first definition of Shijanath, I love what it says, a, a verb meaning to reel to and fro. Habakkuk shows that number one, he can still worship even though he may not see or understand what God is doing. Habakkuk worships in the midst of his suffering and trial and pain. As I thought about this this week, I I realized that as I looked back at some of my most raw and spiritual worship that I've ever experienced, it's always come in my life when I'm wrestling. Have any of you ever experienced that before? I think that's because in the midst of our suffering, we're forced to surrender. I think that's because when we worship in the midst of our pain, we don't have anything that we're trying to hide anymore. All of the walls and defenses are down. When our faith is all we have left, it becomes more real than ever before. The second thing to note, though, is that uh, number two, as Habakkuk worships, he remembers. Last week, we talked about the importance of remembering in the context of writing things down. And specifically, right here in verse two, we see he remembers Taman and Paran. Now, you may not know this, but those are two places that God took Israel to uh, uh, to for refuge after saving his people from slavery and bondage to Egypt. Habakkuk remembers how God was in control, how, how God took them to a place of refuge and suffering, how God was and has always been faithful throughout history. Have I ever told you that Pastor Rob doubts sometimes? Have I ever told you that I struggle in my own faith at times? Have I ever admitted to you that I've wrestled and reeled to and fro with God even as a pastor? Do you know what always brings me back though? Remembering. Remembering. I remember when God took a young, foolish 17-year-old and turned his life upside down. I remember when God uh, called that 17-year-old into ministry. I remember when he told me to give up everything I knew in the U.S. of A. to move to Canada of all places and pursue that call. I remember meeting my wife there, though, and having God confirm to me that she was the one I was supposed to marry as we worshiped together in a small Baptist church. I remember him providing for us in college even when our bank balance was zero or possibly even less than that at times. I remember waiting. I remember waiting and waiting and waiting to go back into full-time ministry after my wife had had some immigration trouble only to realize that God was growing me and maturing me and preparing me for something awesome up here in Charles City with some absolutely incredible people. How about this one? I remember God using the death of my little sister, Abigail, at just the age of two years old. I remember him using her death to bring my entire family into a real relationship with him. I remember God being faithful to me in my darkest of places and in my most terrible hours. I would argue that real faith shows itself most in the midst of our trials. Real faith shows itself when we're uncomfortable and hurting, yet choose to worship, when we are reeling to and fro, but still acknowledge God on His throne. 
If you skip down to verse 16, you can see Habakkuk reeling to and fro and how he finishes out his writing. Let's just read this together. I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, my legs trembled, yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of the deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. I think this is probably the most powerful piece of scripture in all of Habakkuk. He says that even though my heart pounded and my lips quivered, even though decay crept in my bones and my legs trembled, I will wait. I mean, just think about that imagery for a second. Think about the last time, the last time you shook with fear under trial, the last time your lips quivered because of sadness. Habakkuk is saying that even though I'm uncertain and scared, God, I know you've got this. Even though I fear what's ahead and the light at the end of the tunnel and the fact that it's far away or the fact that I can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel, God, I will worship. God, I will rejoice. God, I will be glad in you, my Savior. I want to challenge you with something this morning. As we wrap up this series today, I want to challenge you to really lean into God during this time. But then I want to press you not just to lament, but to worship and rejoice. To remember and hold fast. To understand that God is hope in the dark, not always hope that takes us out of the dark. Let me say that again. To understand that God is hope in the dark, not always hope that takes us out of the dark. And I want to challenge you with a very difficult thought that I fear very few people realize or even believe. And we talked about this in the last series. Here it is. God isn't concerned with making us happy. He's concerned about making us holy. Living for God isn't about getting what you want. He's not a genie in a bottle. He wants to make you more like his son. Going back to Mark Driscoll, this is what he said. He said, faith is not a way to manipulate God to get what you want. Faith is where you trust God to use life's circumstances, good or bad, to make you more like Jesus. I think God lets us experience the valleys because that's when we have the most opportunity to become more like Jesus. It's there that we join with him in our suffering and come to know him in our deepest of ways. C.S. Lewis said that pain is God's megaphone to a dying world. It's there that we are forced to completely surrender. I think some of you need to hear that today. You need to do that today. You need to surrender your lives over to God despite the darkness. You need to give your life over to him and let him be concerned about the outcomes. Right now you're living in fear and trembling, but it's for all the wrong reasons. Scripture says that we are to live in fear of God and God alone. And it's time for you to start doing that. Today, before we take communion together, hopefully many of you are prepared by this time, we want to offer you the opportunity to do exactly that. Scripture is clear that, um, man, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one's perfect. You probably heard your friends say that, that before, right? No one had to teach you how to sin. No one had to teach you to be mean. No one had to teach you to be bitter or angry or to be cowardice. It, no one had to teach you those things. They just naturally came inside you. That's because we were born into sin. When Adam and Eve fell, we all fell into sin with them. It was, you want to talk about a plague that spread across the globe. The very first plague that ever spread across the globe was sin, and it's affecting every single one of us. And scripture also says that the wages of sin is death. Hell is a very real place, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, despite the mess that we were, 
God stepped into the mess that wants to step into the mess that we are, and he wants to cleanse us and redeem us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Sin causes death and separation, but the Holy Spirit and the sacrifice of Jesus, the Lamb of God on the cross for our sins, cleanses us from all of those things. This morning, I think many of you need to step into that cleansing. You need to step into that commitment. And so if that's you this morning, if you would say, Rob, I've been fear, I've been in trembling, I've been paying attention to all the wrong things, and, and I just need to surrender it all over to God, and I need to surrender my life over to you, over to him for the very first time. If that's you this morning, will you just pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together digitally this morning. And God, we recognize our sins and our fears and our doubts, Lord, and we realize that they are not of you. God, Right now, we repent. We ask for forgiveness. We apologize for the wrong things that we've done, and we ask that you would take control of our lives. We are obviously not doing a good job with it, Lord, and we ask that you would take control, Lord. We ask that you would help us to only worry about following you and let you worry about the outcomes, Father. Lord, right now, in this moment, even as we sit in front of our TV screens or our tablets or our phones, we surrender our lives to you. We make that commitment to you. We, we, we raise our white flag of surrender that you might take over. We trust our lives in you, God. We love you, God, and we cannot wait to see what you're going to do as we pursue you with all of our hearts. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, right now, we're going to go ahead and transition into a time of communion. Um, here at the bridge, we practice something called an open table, which means that um, uh, if, you've, if you are in right relationship with Jesus Christ and you've asked for forgiveness for your sins um, and, and you want to um, partake in the elements with us, man, you are more than welcome to do so. But the scripture is also clear that if you haven't asked for forgiveness, if you haven't repented of your sins, then man, now is the time for you to either do that or just simply abstain from partaking of the elements. I know... Uh, for the last couple of weeks, we've tried to warn many of you about the fact that we're going to be doing this. Uh, if you aren't able to, to uh, get a hold of any grape juice or wine or, 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 uh, or bread or anything, make sure just just go grab a glass of water and, and a piece of bread or a cracker or something. I've got some Ritz crackers and, and uh, some Kool-Aid here, believe it or not. And uh, that's what we're going to be using this morning to partake of the elements. But um, communion is all about a, a sacred ritual that we practice as a, as a Christian race to remember exactly what God did for us. What a perfect time as we wrap up this series and talk about worship and remembering what Jesus did for us. Uh, I think this is a great way to end this series. So uh, right now, why don't I just pray a blessing over the elements and then we'll go ahead and partake of them together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather together, even digitally, Lord, um, where we can break together, break bread together in one spirit, Father. Lord, we know that you are here with us. We know that you see our heart's intent. We know that there are going to be somebody, there's going to be someone using Gatorade and Goldfish during this time. And that's, uh, I think that's awesome, God, because they're so passionate about worshiping you through your, the command of your son, Jesus, to, to, to take of communion together, Lord. Um, God, you see the heart's intent. And I think that that is more raw and more real than anything in this world, Lord. So just bless these elements. Um, um, make them uh, glor glorifying to you. And may this time of remembering uh, be a blessing to all of us. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is what Paul wrote in Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he took, the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said this, This is my body, which is for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me whenever you drink it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you and praise you for our church family and how we can gather together each morning, Lord, um, on Sundays, even digitally, Father, for the great comments and the chat boxes and the ways we can gather together in so many ways, Lord. God, help us to surrender to you 
the only hope we have that we ha- that we have in the dark, Lord. Help us to be mindful of what you've called us to do. Help us to wrestle and embrace. Help us to listen and wait. Help us to remember and worship each and every single day, God. God, we know that you are working uh, something out as we sit in the darkness, as we struggle through this time. God, we pray for those across our nation, across our county, across our state that are struggling in this time of darkness, Lord. Lead them to your son, Jesus. Help them to find the only hope that they can have in you. And may they surrender every piece of that which they are. God, um, Lord, thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, that we might be in relationship with you. And help us all to surrender. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Bridge Services Online. If this video was a blessing to you, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like our Facebook page, and give online at www.thebridgechurchcc.com. Hey, Bridge Kids, this is Tammy. Wanted to stop by and say hi and let you know how much I really, really miss you. Um, I want to encourage you to continue to be strong. I want you to remember the song that we always sing. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I want you to know that I know it's not an easy time for you. It's not easy for any of us, but we know that God is in control. So remember, my God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And I want you to also remember to keep memorizing your Bible verses. And I want you to want to encourage you to read your Bible each and every day. If you don't have a Bible, Um, I want you to know that I will bring you a Bible. If you don't have one of your own, because who wants to read their parents' Bible, right? But if you don't have your own, then I want to bring one to you. So make sure you let your parents know that and have them message me on on Facebook, and and I'll be glad to bring you a Bible. But you know what? I want you to, to stay strong and keep praising God, because you remember that praise, what's that? It's a yippee, yahoo, way to go, God. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. What makes you feel like giving up? When it's hard to get started? When it takes too much time? Too much repetition? Too much discomfort? Too much saying no to other things you wanna be doing? Sometimes you just wanna say, enough, it's not worth it. I give up. But when you choose to stick it out, when you choose to put in the time, the repetition, 
the discomfort, the focus. You find it gets easier. You gain momentum. You can see the goal line ahead. And you get excited as you make your final rush to the finish. God can give you the power to stick with it and follow through. Whether you're learning an instrument or you're learning how to shoot a three-pointer <laughs> or maybe simply trying to clean your really messy room. <laughs> With God's help, you'll be saying, can't stop, won't stop. When you choose to finish what you start, even when it's tough, others can see God's power at work in you. That's why determination is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Welcome to my studio for Sticky Stuff! Today, I am venturing into something I have never tried before. You know that feeling you get when you're about to try something new that you don't know how to do, and you're just so excited by the thrill of it that you can just barely wait? Well, that's how I feel when I'm looking at this table. Ooh, look. Ooh. Somehow, these random, ordinary household items mix together and turn into slime! Yes! Slime! So the truth is, I am not crafty. Like, I've never done crafts before in my life. In my life! So, 
as you can imagine, this is a little daunting for me. <laughs> but if you know me, you know I love a good challenge. So let's not get stuck talking. Let's make some slime. <laughs> Apparently you need this much. Okay, so step one is to pour one cup of glue into a bowl. Oh, fiddlesticks. Can't find my measuring cups. That's not gonna work. Hmm. Nope, this doesn't have a measuring on it. This doesn't either. I feel like you would need that for contact solutions. Hmm, maybe if I go, it's not my treasure chest. Oh, come on. I guess I'll just have to improvise. When in doubt, pick the biggest cup. Slime time, here we come. Whoop, whoop. Okay, it's not heavy at all. Yeah! Go, 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 go! Oh man, this is great. This is also a great workout for you all at home. Oh, that sure is a lot of glue. Too much glue. You know what I really need right now? A fresh cup of determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started, even if it seems impossible. Today's story is about Jesus and his disciples just before Jesus goes back up to heaven. Let's see what he does and how his disciples respond. As for me, I found the right size cup! Looks like I've got some slime to make. See you in a little bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the books of Matthew, Luke, and Acts. When Jesus returned to life, roller coasters hadn't been invented yet. But as far as his friends were concerned, they might as well have been living on one wild coaster ride. Peter and Matthew might have gone over the whole story one more time as they walked the dusty roads from Galilee back towards Jerusalem. Remember how it started? Jesus does all these miracles. Thousands of people gather to listen to him. And we hear God's voice saying, this is my son and I love him. But then he gets all those threats from the religious leaders. And he ignores them all and raises Lazarus to life. That lousy Judas betrays him. The religious leaders arrest him. And I run away like a fool. And Jesus is killed. But he comes back to life. And now we get to hang out with him. I think he's got big plans. Did you hear how he told me at the lake to take care of his followers? And what he said to us all on the mountain in Galilee. About making new disciples? Yeah. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Big job. How do you remember all this stuff? I record it. You should write a book sometime. I'm still not so sure about the Holy Spirit part. Same. But Jesus is here with us now. We can do anything while he stays with us. Forever! Ahead, Peter and Matthew and the other disciples could see Jerusalem in the distance, the temple rising above the other buildings. He said to meet him back in Jerusalem. For the Feast of Pentecost, probably. That would be the perfect time for him to do something big. If he wants followers in all nations, that must mean we take over Israel first, right? I don't know about the takeover part. As Jesus' friends returned to Jerusalem, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city near Bethany. Nice view of the city from here. I bet he's finally gonna give us all the big plan now. He already did. Make disciples of all nations. Yeah, but how? Is he gonna gather 50,000 people at Pentecost? Or maybe he'll take us all with him on an epic road trip. He probably wouldn't have brought us all up here if he didn't have something big to say. Sure enough, as they ate a meal on the side of the hill, Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit thing again. Peter couldn't take it anymore. He had to ask. Lord, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? Everyone stopped talking, then looked to Peter, then to Jesus, who shook his head. 
You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. The disciples exchanged glances. Okay, you did say the all nations part already, but wh where will you be? And please, can you explain how the Holy Spirit's going to help us? As Jesus smiled at his friends, he lifted his hands and spoke a blessing over them. He's not answering the question. As Jesus was speaking, something incredible happened. Slowly, he began to rise into the air. He's standing in the air. How is he standing in the air? Jesus' friends stared, mouths open. Soon, a cloud hid him from view, but they continued to gape. Men of Galilee. The disciples blinked and finally looked down to discover two tall men dressed in white standing right beside them. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. Come back? Come back when? But the man in white were gone. He did say, don't be concerned about times or dates. But he just gave us the biggest job ever. Tell everyone in the whole world about him? There's gotta be a plan. The Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit is the plan. But we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. So, wait. That's the plan? That's the plan for now. Jesus gave his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. Share the story of Jesus and his love for every nation across the entire world. But soon, he gave them everything they needed to not only start the job, but keep going. Well, it's taken me a few failed attempts, but I did it. Woo! Homemade slime, ladies and gents. This stuff is wild. Wow. Woo! And now I just gotta figure out how to get it all unstuck from my fingers. Back to the story. Let's get to it. From the beginning, God had a plan to rescue us. We see it in the Old Testament when he told Noah to build an ark to rescue his family from the flood and when he used Moses to rescue the Jewish people from slavery out of Egypt. Then finally, he sent the ultimate savior, his son, Jesus. Jesus loves us so much that he died to save us. And then he rose back to life. But he knew he was eventually going to leave his disciples behind. He gave his friends a mission and promised that he would send them a helper. Oh. Jesus' mission for his friends is also true for us today, to tell others about him. And just like he promised he'd always be with them, he's always with us too. Now that's some good <laughs> news! It must have seemed impossible to the disciples to carry out Jesus' mission. Sometimes things seem impossible for us too. But we can remember that God is always with us. And when he says he's always with us, that means always. And remembering that God's with you and that he can do the impossible can help you stay determined when you're doing something new or something difficult. And since everybody's different, different things are going to be difficult for everybody. For me, it was making slime. But to some of you, you could do this with your eyes closed. I definitely couldn't. I could not do that. To other people, hiking a mountain, or learning how to play a musical instrument, or juggling a soccer ball might seem impossible, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Just remember God's with you and keep going. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when it seems impossible. Well, I'm gonna go play with my slime <laughs> and maybe make some more with different colors <gasps> and glitter. Oh, the possibilities are endless. See you guys next time.
Thank you for joining us for Bridge Services Online. If this video was a blessing to you, make sure to subscribe to our channel, like our Facebook page, and give online at www.thebridgechurchcc.com.